Good afternoon, YouTube. This is Griffin8280 <clears throat> on the TS Craft server. Uh, not not with chicken waffles anymore. Uh, well, I'm still on chicken waffles. I actually own that server, so <laughs> I'm never going to be away from that one. But uh, I'm pairing up here with TechStack, who is one of uh, one of the YouTubers that I subscribe to to watch, and uh, he does LPs, and, and he asked me if I wanted to come on and, and do this, and so I'm um, I'm here now. We're doing LPs over here as well, and today's uh, videos I'm going to do a a short server tour show you what all things I have built while uh, while I've been getting started on here and then I'm gonna do a tutorial video on this guy right here so let's get started this is uh, just my front room area um, here's or or processing and all that kind of stuff I'm actually uh, getting away from IC2 machines a little bit I've always used IC2 machines there's nothing wrong with them I just uh, I just think I'm gonna switch it up a little bit and, and do some uh, stuff with thermal expansion this time around so this is my my attempt at doing that this down here is my energy generation room I have, as you can see, a few uh, liquid redstone energy cells that all hold, you know, 600,000 MJ. And then I have 16 magma engines that pump out right here and uh, and create all the MJ that I need. And I'll show you the how where they get their magma from, basically. Let's shut that. And this is just the front area where I kind of have my sorting. I did do a few IC2 machines, which is. Uh, this stuff right here, a couple geothermal generators, and mostly just for the compressor and extractor. Those are two machines that they don't really have a TE equivalent for yet, and they're uh, they're nice to have. There's Elka, and then right here is a MFE that has uh, just for charging stuff like my little electric chick pack and and all of that stuff. So I also have a full set of nano armor, which. Uh, is as you can imagine a bit of an energy hog. He comes over and uses my uh, uses my MFE for charging. But as you can see, I, I made the nano armor and oh yeah, the goggles. Nano armor was last night. Recording now for the tutorial. All right. So then we come over here, and as you can see, I have a big iron tank. It's one of those ones that holds two million millibuckets, which equip basically just knock three zeros off of that. It's two thousand regular buckets. I don't know why they just don't measure it that way, but that's what they decided to go with. This. Uh <laughs> um, this right here is a liquid tesseract, which um, in the Nether there is a the second. Uh, Pair to this guy, basically, as you can see, they operate on uh, on a specific frequency, and it sends uh, it sends that s the lava or whatever liquid you pump into it to the other side. And as you see, I have just a uh, standard liquid duct hooked up to it to pump down into my tank, so that's what keeps that full. And I can come here real fast and show you my Nether pumping station. <coughs> That's all it is to it. I am pumping dry a lava lake, which is taking a minute to load here, but great big lava lake down here below us. And uh, I just I traveled for a while. Look at there. Huh. I didn't know there was energy nodes in the uh, nether as well. I guess you can make a thom craft area here if you wanted to. Oh, wow. So a fair amount of thom energy here, too. It's, that's interesting. So anyways, I'm going to pump this lake dry <laughs> eventually. It'll probably take some time, but uh, yeah, eventually it'll happen. But yeah, this is just a standard pump. A couple of switches to keep the redstone engines running, and then it just pumps into uh, into the liquid tesseract on this side. As you can see, it still has the, uh, it's got the same frequency and, and uh, my name that I put on there for that frequency. So it's, it's pretty nice go back here all right and then this other guy a little bit lighter as you can see the the little dots here are a little bit lighter in color from a liquid tesseract this is actually an energy tesseract and uh, I have this set up so that whenever I am quarrying which you can see right here I have the other energy tesseract and the quarry in the in the chest because it's actually at my old quarry location I need to move it because it's already gone down to bedrock for me but uh, this right here actually just 
<laughs> it's like beams the energy from my pumping station or my energy creation station downstairs with those 16 magma engines and uh, beams that energy then to wherever I have that other energy test rack set up in the quarry so you put the quarry down and uh, once once you have it staked out with world markers and everything is ready to go and then all you have to do is just set the energy test rack next to it and it automatically powers the quarry and off you go it starts uh, it starts running so this is my enchanting area. I have it set up so that it sucks down to the floor just to save a little bit of floor space. And I uh, put these Nitor lights just because I think it makes it look more uh, more wizardy whenever I'm doing this stuff. <laughs> and then over here is my Thaumcraft area. It's a pretty standard Thaum area, really. And let's see, do I have... yeah, I got some redstone. Alright, let's... Uh, Let's load up. We're going to load this thing up and put little packets. Load this. This is the purpose of the tutorial, if you guys hadn't guessed. That's why I've been kind of avoiding looking and, and talking about it here. But uh, it is a. Put my jetpack on so I can get out of here. It is a vanilla style obsidian generator with a twist. It actually is uh, a little little bit of automation to it now of my own design. I actually wrote a program for the computer craft, and, uh, and that controls it. As you can see, I have all the ribbon cables down here that go to all the different, uh, different things. It uses block breakers, dispensers, and deployers are the three main components um, to running this whole setup. And uh, the deployers are these guys here on the bottom, and they're connected to the black line. The block breakers are connected to the green line, and I have them set up so that they use a redstone tube. Now, the redstone tubes need to be powered by a redstone torch, which kind of made this an interesting setup. So I had to go all the way down here with it and power this bottom block, which is just basically an inverter. So this torch stays on, that torch is off. As soon as this receives power, this it powers this block down here, which turns that torch off, turns this one on, powers the tubes, and powers the block breakers. So, pretty simple setup. Back in here, there is a series of pistons, seven pistons, and I'll explain their use here in a minute. That's hooked to the orange line. And then the white line goes up and over and powers the disp dispensers right here, which all have just basically a lava source bucket in them. Now, my first design was a, uh, was a design that you can find actually all over YouTube, and it uses one single dispenser right here in the center. And then the rest of these were just standard you know, blocks. And uh, I had set up the computer program so that whenever it ticked this dispenser off and uh, it deployed its uh, lava source, um, it would then sit for 10 seconds. I could turn it back off and it would sit for 10 seconds and, uh, and count that off so that the lava would then have time to spread end to end. Well, now the problem with that, and it's not really a problem, it's just, you know, are you patient or not? In the case of some of the guys on my server, or this server here, they didn't want to wait. So I ended up uh, coming up with a little bit better design and putting a, a lava source basically in every single one, which is real easy when you have a gigantic tank with 2,000 buckets of lava over there sitting. So <clears throat> that made that really simple. But this uses the simple vanilla generator uh, mechanic where you stick redstone down here. You put a water, some sort of water uh, block set up right next to it and then whenever you put a you tick off a, uh, a lava source on top of here and or any lava at all it automatically converts that redstone then into obsidian now these are the pistons the sticky pistons that I have in here and it's a whole row of them seven of them now if this was still a vanilla setup where you only had one dispenser in the center when the lava would spread after this dispenser picks that lava up the problem with it is that uh, lava doesn't dissipate immediately and that was a mechanic that was added in like either 1.3 or, or one of the early versions of 1.4 I forget exactly when uh, the Mojang guys put that in but uh, the lava would kind of linger like the source block even though it was sucked away the lava would still kind of linger on top of the blocks in here and as you can imagine if you use if I deployed the block break at that point pulled the obsidian those uh, those lava blocks would fall down in here and get turned into cobblestone which was kind of an irritant because then you'd still have to come in here and clear it out so what I did was I put in this row of pistons and I set the I set it to fire off in the sequence so that after the after this uh, this dispenser pulls the lava source block back into itself then the pistons would fire off and clear whatever lava was left on top up here it would just you know push it out of existence and then suck back in and then once that 
that was done, then the block, block breakers would deploy and, and uh, pull that obsidian into themselves. So, here we will see. Oh wait, I gotta load the uh, gotta load the de deployers. Almost forgot about that. This is the only thing that is kind of not automated about it is loading these deployers, and that's just for right now. I've actually got a another version of this design floating through my head right now that I've got to test out in Creative, where I'm going to use maybe a Sortron to uh, detect whether or not these have redstone in them still, and then it'll push redstone to them if they don't, so that uh, it would then at that point be a 100% fully automated obsidian farm. You could just put it on a loop and let it go, and I don't really know why you would want an entire chest of uh, obsidian, but you could definitely uh, make that happen. Okay, so that's done. Let's fire up our program here. And it's just named Obsidian. And here's all it is. It just asks you how much Obsidian do you want. Now, of course, we're creating it in blocks of 7. So that's why I have it set up 1 through 5. You've got 7, 14, 21, 28, and 35 blocks. Now, right now, I only have two redstone dust in each, uh, in each deployer. So basically, we can only really run it two times unless we want to collect a whole bunch of cobblestone. So <laughs> right now, we're just going to hit the number 2 and go and here it goes it's going it's already deployed there's your oops so then there's the pistons and then it sucks the uh, obsidian in so here we go there's round two deployed the that and then that gets sucked back in pistons will come out of course there's nothing there now and then it uh, uh oh we had a problem but then the block breakers deploy and grab that looks like uh looks like we lost one of our couple of our buckets of lava. That's weird. I had actually set the system up so that uh, so that wouldn't happen. I had to lengthen the uh, two redstone. It looks like I lost a bucket. Well, I got one there I can just use. And now you'll see the benefits of having a giant tank of lava right here. So every now and then, I guess that happens. Um, it was happening regularly uh, pretty frequent whenever I had first set this up because I didn't set the tick, the delay tick long enough in here for the, to uh, grab that uh, that lava back out. But ever since I set the delay tick to one and a half, it, uh, it seemed to have fixed it back then. Maybe, maybe it didn't. Oh, let's terminate. Well, it's not going to let me terminate, so I'll just run through a should just basically create a whole bunch of... No. <laughs> it did not. Just created a big mess is what it did. And made a whole bunch of... So there, now you guys can see what happens when things go wrong. <laughs> Alright, so let's fill this area with cobble and we can reset the system basically. That's the other nice thing about this is that it is easily resetted or whenever uh, you have problems or something like that happens. So there you go. We're fully reset at this point. Now well, I mean we got our we got our obsidian. Obviously have one or two little kinks to work out of this yet. Thought I had them worked out honestly. Let's take a look at the program. We might have to extend that out to a two tick delay, which is this right here. So this is after it fires the uh, after it fires the and pushes the lava blocks out. Then you have this one and a half tick delay, which isn't long enough for lava to actually start spreading. So we don't have a, a lava issue anywhere. But uh, it sucks it back in. It's usually long enough for the deployers to uh, to not derp out like they just did. Let's uh, let's extend this to a two tick and see what we get. There we go. Now I have a feeling. That two tick is going to allow on this end where I have it open so that you can access this. 
is going to allow that uh, lava to spread. I'm just hoping it doesn't catch the door on fire. If it does, I may just end up putting an iron door in with a lever right there so that uh, so that doesn't happen. But let's exit the program and just run it. If I can spell. There we go. Let's just run it through one, one iteration. There it goes. Sucked it back in. Pistons fire and block breakers grabbed. So there we go. And you can see it's filling up. All right, very good. That seems to have seems to have fixed our little issue. All right, I'll s let's uh, quit here and I'll run to uh, run to the creative world and we will show you how this is uh, built. All right, guys, we're back, and this is the uh, the rest of the tutorial. This is going to be how to build it. Now, this uh, specific tutorial is going to show you the normal obsidian generator. Like this is vanilla. Um, this one right here specifically is going to be a little bit wider than vanilla because uh, of what we can do with uh, the lava in this case. And as far as I know, this actually should still work in vanilla as well. <coughs> um, it used to be limited by the uh, seven block width. Uh, as far as because the dispensers whenever you would dispense lava and or water it would only spread um, six blocks or I'm sorry three blocks in either direction so including your source block that was a total of seven blocks and with this specific design you should be able to uh, build it honestly as wide as you want now for this specific tutorial I'm going uh, I'm going ten wide so it's going to be an exact uh, one two three four five six seven eight nine ten blocks total so here we go. Let's go ahead and build this out. Now this layer we remove. And yep. Now we have to set blocks on the inside in here so that we can put our water down without it getting interrupted. There we go. Now we bust these out. Water should flow down and into the channel that we created. Beautiful. Now we get our deployers. Now I'm just doing this really fast. Um, like clicking and going just because I'm in creative. But uh, you guys won't have that luxury so you might want to lay down your row of deployers before you actually do the whole uh, the whole water trick just because it will make this uh, much easier to manage if you do it that way. Now for me I usually do glass on this guy just to clean it up make it look nice but you don't necessarily have to. It's whatever building material is your choice honestly. Go ahead and cap this off. Now, in my uh, in my server world where I'm actually playing right now, I have this built. Now it's only the seven wide version, but uh, there we go. I have it. Uh, <coughs> I have it set into a wall, so everything is kind of capped off and contained real nicely, and and uh, looks all pretty and all that kind of stuff. So, as generic B would say, it has been purified. All right, so now we're gonna lay our block breakers down. Now, also the other thing too is that I actually have this set down to the floor in my world, so these block breakers are actually uh, are actually foot level. So, like, if you're walking up to it in in my world, uh, this is where the floor is. So you would actually be able to walk on top of these block breakers. And I'm not gonna build it that way, just so it's easier for you guys to see where uh, where stuff is placed and where it all goes. And this is about the easiest uh, setup I could think of to do. So now we've got the block breakers down. One thing we are going to need is redstone tube. So let's go ahead and get some of that. And I use that to actually power the whole block breaker row. Now, I usually come out to here and we set a chest. Let's grab a diamond chest because Hey, I can. I'm in creative. So there we go. We got our chest. So everything will basically filter on into that chest at this point. Uh, that is good. Now let's uh, let's do some wiring. Let me set up a 
So, here's where it gets a little fun, actually. Let's not do some wiring just yet. we got a few more things to do. We're going to set... I think... Yeah, I can set them. And this is why this will work even in vanilla, is because the, these dispensers are actually going to hold your lava source. So, just like that, your, your dispensers are, are holding your lava source. And... I'm going to grab these one at a time. Oops. I thought you could grab them. I can... I thought I'd be left clicked or shift clicked. Oh well. Oh, what's ten times? what I could do. Oh, work smarter, not harder here. <laughs> oh, I don't want a snowball. Snowball would not do much good for me here. Did I do that one? Yeah, we did that one. Alright, we got that guy, we got that guy, we got this guy, and we got this guy. Now, because I'm actually playing Feed the Beast, I'm actually going to show you how to do this so that you can still have clear glass blocks. Um, <clears throat> so, this is going to, at this point, kind of veer away from the vanilla discussion. Of course, you know, it's not going to work in vanilla anyway because I'm using block breakers and deployers. Um, <clears throat> but I was just illustrating that uh, you could probably make this work if you had a bunch of deploy or a bunch of uh, dispensers like this as well as your water and then you just go down here you lay your redstone source or your lay redstone and then you'd have to wire all these dispensers together on one button to dispense at the same time and then retract so it's actually uh, actually wouldn't be too hard to accomplish uh, but for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm doing basically the feed the beast method because of uh, that's well what we're using on the server. So let's go ahead and now on our server to cover this over so that it didn't look so awful, I went ahead and grabbed some stone covers and it matches perfectly with the floor in my uh, in my little lair. Just like that. And there you go. You have a nice unbroken floor. However, your pneumatic pipes are still under the floor and, uh, and usable. Now, the other thing that I did, <coughs> and this is uh, this was a bit of a journey of discovery, honestly, was that I used these tank gauge blocks. And the reason why is because this is honestly the only c clear block in the Feed the Beast mod pack that you can actually, uh, you can actually put wire on. Every other block, of course, is like glass, and uh, and they cannot be any kind of wire or anything like that at all. It's it's a bit of an irritant, but uh, it is what it is. So that's just the way they produce this. All right, let's go with. Let's see, yeah, one, two, three, four. Yeah, there's not really a center on this, but then again, with red red power wire, you don't really need a center. So we can go ahead and do that up and over there we go <clears throat> so now whenever this wire right here receives power it will actually power every single one of these dispensers right here and uh, that is exactly what we want so next thing we gotta do is run our power wire for our deployers and block breakers so there's our block breakers we're going to be powering that on uh, on the redstone tube there, and that's where that torch is going to come in handy. Uh, I got rid of earlier because I didn't need it yet. So you hit that, and it actually powers that. So we don't want it powered all the time. So what we do is we take another torch, stick it down there. It turns that guy off, and then take our red wire. We can wire it just like that and that'll run on down there, it'll power that bottom block I don't know if I can actually show you that 
yeah, powers that bottom block, turns that torch off. And there you go, turns the torch back off. So that's uh, that's how that works. And then these are our deployers. We're not going to need torches for those guys. Alright, let's run the whole length down here. Boy, it's getting dark. Uh, I don't believe I'll be able to see myself with the redstone torch, but we'll give it a shot. Hey, there we go. We can see a little bit. Okay, we're at the bottom of the uh, deployers, and we need to wire them up. So, let's grab 64 wire here, and just run a wire the whole length of them. So that they all get powered when one of them gets powered. And I'm going to cover this in just so baddies don't spawn down in here. Of course, on a uh, survival server, uh, that is ideal. And uh, creative mode like I am now, that doesn't really matter. But I'm going to do this as if I would be building it in survival. Okay, so we have that wire there, that wire there. Those two are, are two of our main wires. And right up here is our third main wire. So we have uh, pretty much all of our wiring. Now we just need to get it hooked up. So for that, let's put in some glass. And I think I usually do sandstone just to yeah, just to cover that up there. Alright. Okay, so now, in our world, or the world that I'm playing on, one thing I did do, because microblocks are just freaking great, is this. If you don't want people messing with your, your wiring and such, it's going to be kind of hard to get this to work out. This is how you go about covering it up. So... That's just how I managed that. And then you can do that. Um, now for me, on, on my world again, our, uh, oh, there we go. Like I said, I've got this buried underground, so I think I did, uh, I did that. And then regular panel cover right there. But then the rest of this would have been covered that way. Now also on in that world as well, like there's a uh, there's a wall right here. As you can imagine. Now what I did was I busted that out and then I put on a There we go. Put on an iron door. And then, of course, we can hook that up to just a standard lever. And basically, this was just to make it so that somebody couldn't get in there whenever uh, whenever the dispensers were getting ready to, de to deploy. And then they, of course, would die because <laughs> they uh, they wouldn't survive the uh, the dispensing of the lava source blocks that is going to be occurring inside here. go. So you walk in, you see your whole line of deployers, you gotta, you gotta deploy on there. Now, on the inside here as well, I did, uh, I did cover these with glass blocks too. Uh, I gotta go outside. Huh. Well, that's weird. It won't give me, uh, won't give me the glass covers. Just like that. So, whole way, whole way down the line just to give it a uniform appearance and to make it look like it's uh, it's glass blocks up there when really there's not so that's it, that's uh, that's the whole that build up in a, in a nutshell now we go for the fun stuff 
Let me grab a computer. Set that guy right there. <clears throat> or, if you really want to, you can set one like that. If you have your uh, if you have yours set out like this. But the big thing is uh, this. We have standard bundled cable. And then we're going to need three colors because we have three computers. So let's do... Let's do dark green, or regular green, and black. So we'll do black, white, and green. <clears throat> All right, so our bundled cable comes out of the bottom. And we've got to split this off into three locations. So the first location, let's call it white, is going to come up here and go to that guy. All right. Now our second which normally would be like that. Our second is going to be this guy. We'll call him green. And then our third is going to be black. Last but not least, huh? And we can actually do that there. There we go. Just fill it in a little bit so we don't get mobs. Ah. Survival inventory. That's the only thing that's kind of a pain about these bundled cables. They will link with just about anything. Alright, so there we go. We got green goes down to those guys, black goes to the uh, to the main deployers, and then white goes up here to these guys. So now we just have to get or sign in and do our program. So, I've already written a program for this, and uh, this is how you would download and get it. And this uh, this link right here, or this uh, paste bin document, I will actually link in the description of this video, so you guys can get it and use it if you if you want to. Well, we're going to call it Obsidian. And there you go, connected and downloaded as Obsidian. So now we have to go in and edit, because I actually had set this up originally for uh, for outputting also to an orange line that would have been your uh, would have been pistons, but that is no longer needed. So we can go ahead and just uh, and just delete that whole section actually. Starts right here with this one. Okay, and down. All right, so that is now gone. Okay, so the first thing to get deployed. Now the first thing to fire off is going to be our deployers and we have that currently set to black and that's these guys right here so black and black which are those two um, so what that is going to be is a, it turns it on so it deploys whatever's in its inventory turns it off and then uh, and sleeps one so that uh, you have a one tick delay basically between each function so that uh, the the deployers can turn on off and then your next thing can turn on off which should be the next thing is this guy right here and this should be your uh, dispensers which is the white line so you have white white and this is what's fun you, you gotta turn that on and off and then you have to wait so you wanna wait like I have it set to 10 seconds here but for this specific setup we don't actually have to wait that long three seconds should be more than enough we'll test that here in just a second to make sure that is correct <coughs> but uh, Anyways, you wait those. It's going to wait those three seconds, and then it's going to fire the deployers again. Turn them on and off. And uh, what that's going to do is then suck that source block, that lava source block, back into the bucket that is inside the deployer. And then, as the final step in the whole process, these last two lines are the green color, and that is what's going to uh, power the block breakers. Now, this is all set into a loop. And I have it set up here so that you can see. And since we have 10, we're going to change this to 10. 
but it's going to ask you, you have five choices, how many blocks basically of obsidian do you want to create? And for our specific setup, since it's 10 wide, it's going to be 10 blocks, 20 blocks, 30 blocks, 40 blocks, or 50 blocks. And then uh, it's going to ask the user for, for its input. That's what that print uh, number, and then right underneath that is A, two number, read. So that read is actually what's going to ask the user for the input, and it's going to tell it that the user should be inputting a number, one through five. So then once that's done, we have to initialize i and set it to zero because it's just the local variable and then repeat is the start of our loop. And then it goes through this entire loop where it turns, uh, turns all the different wires on and off. And then at the end of that, it, uh, it takes i equals i plus one. So it basically just adds one to i. And then that <coughs> very bottom line there until i equals equals a. So A, as you can remember, is what was initialized as two number, and, and this is the input that we actually received from the user. So let's say the user inputted three. So it's going to initialize I and turn it to, or set it to zero, and then it's going to run one iteration of this, and at the end, I is going to equal one. Well, that doesn't quite equal A yet. The, our input was three. So then it's going to go back through and do the loop again. And then the second time it's going to be at two, still doesn't equal right, go back through and do it again. So it does the loop one more time and when it hits three then i is then at that point equal to three. Um, the loop is going to close down and it's going to print out enjoy your obsidian. And that is the essence of the program. So now we have to go over here and load some redstone into uh, Let's grab 64. Just get rid of everything else in our inventory. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's grab another 64 because we're going to need to punch a little bit more obsidian. Or a little. There we go. A little more redstone into these. So, all we have to do now is just basically come down in here and load our deployers. <clears throat> now, some guys on my server were saying that you could do this with string. You could make the obsidian generator basically with string. I have not seen that actually evidenced. Um, I tried doing it with string and it actually just broke the string and the block breaker sucked it into uh, sucked in a bunch of string into themselves so that did not work out for me well as you can imagine but um, supposedly you can do it with string now of course I, I haven't seen that happen but you guys might have different results I don't know okay so that's it let's go ahead and run obsidian there we go. Okay, let's go ahead and run it through four loops. We have eight redstone loaded in each one, so we can actually run it for two loops of four, one loop of five, and a three. You know, basically, you just have to kind of keep in mind how much redstone you currently have in your deployers. So let's run it through four iterations of this. As you can see, there we go. And see, that's why we put the put this guy on here, it's just so that happens. All right, so there's a redstone deploying. There's our lava. Psh and then when the lava gets sucked back in, there's a whole bunch of obsidian. Block breakers pull it in. Uh oh, we seem to have have we seem to have a problem in the end. Huh. Well, that's a bit disconcerting. I wonder if I have to. Uh, okay, so basically, what this is telling me at this point is that uh, I need to increase the timing on the. Um, dispensers. Ah, I'm on far. Okay, so we're back to back to set up. I'm sure we've lost our lava source blocks here. <clears throat> so basically, the uh, 
the loop needs, uh, or the deployers need a little bit more time to initiate. Yeah. So that is going to be this guy right here. So we're going to turn it on, sleep for one and a half ticks, and then turn it off, which is going to suck the suck the lava back out. Or I'm sorry, it's going to turn it on. Turn it off after one and a half ticks, and then wait three ticks, and then turn it on. One and a half ticks later, it's going to turn it back off. So there we go. We are set up. That is saved. Let's go and restore our lava source blocks. Uh, shouldn't need much more redstone, but just in case. Oops. Alright. Had a few malfunction. That one's good. That one's good. That one malfunctioned. That one messed up. That one's good. That one's good. That one messed up. And that one messed up. Okay. We should be set. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and run it through another setup. Uh, let's run it through another four, and here we go. Okay. There's one loop. Here's two. Oh. Okay, that looks to looks to be the problem. Block breakers are sucking the obsidian in. There's more redstone. Get out of the way here, so I'm gonna burn up. go and one more loop so there's another four boom and there we go so there you go that is the completed tutorial and I will upload uh, huh, I end up with a weird I might end up with a clay cover that's a little odd Anyways, uh, tutorial is pretty much over. I mean, this is uh, this is pretty much it. You guys can, of course, tailor this any way you want to um, to get it to do how you want to operate. Um, this is just a rough rough uh, idea as to how I have mine going uh, on on our server. And like I said, uh, the Payspin link will be in the description, so you can download this program. And I'll actually uh, I'll actually edit it so that it has these improved timings, um, so that you guys can just build it straight away and uh, and off you go. But that is the quick way on how to build an obsidian generator that obviously works really good. All right, I'll see you guys when I see you.